We'll start off today here with some of our white and Hansa yellow, a little bit of our yellow ochre, but not too much. And as you can see, I've got just a basic sketch on the canvas here. And let's just start right, uh, well, right here, just to pick somewhere and begin to drop in this very nice, beautiful little sky, sunset colors or sunrise. I don't know about you. Uh, this is probably a sunset because I'm not getting up to see the sunrise, uh, at least not on a regular basis. There we go. Get some of that beautiful golden yellow ochre worked in. I've got clear gel along the top and I've got clear gel down here in my water because I want to, everything I do here, I really want to replicate it just by pulling down here in the water area. Before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. It's always fun to see what you're up to and to, and to see your take on something that I've done. So if you're interested, you can use the information there on the screen. And if I see your painting, you know, to share it with me. And if I see it uh, before the next video, I'll get it in. There we go, there, that looks decent. I'm, I'm adding in some of this red here, okay? And that red will kind of create a nice barrier between the purple and the yellow. I'm gonna mix together a purple here. Just a little bit of the yellow sneaking in there is okay. I wouldn't want much. Okay, and I want it fairly light to begin with on the canvas that's too dark. So sometimes when you when you get a paint that's too dark, you have to wipe your brush out because it just it's so there's so much paint stuck in the brush. Even when you lighten it with white, it still comes out kind of dark. Wipe it off to lighten it up a bit. Just get some of these soft clouds in here. I like those soft clouds. I think they add a little bit of something to the painting. Not sure what, but something. Obviously, we're just laying paint down and we'll get up in here and blend this more later. Now I'm gonna work in just a little bit of a sun spot. You can tell I've got a lot of paint down. You see how it's mixing way more than typical for me. I typically just don't paint with a lot of texture. Either I put it on thick or I wipe it off or else I just don't put it on thick to begin with. But here, because it is glopped on just a little more, you see I'm getting a little more blending and a little chunkier brush strokes. If you want soft blends to your colors, you can't have much paint down. That's all there is to it. If you want just a little, some of that down in here, you could. I don't know that that's totally necessary, but there it is. And I do like to pull, when we're talking about little ponds and pools, it's better to pull straight down to finish. When you're talking about bigger lakes, it's better to go across. That's important. <laughs> Makes a big difference to the overall look. Now I've got this orangey color right here, soft orange color, and I'm gonna paint my furthest away trees. And so kind of right around this area. And I'm just gonna to touch down and pull in to shape just the outside of, the, of those trees. You would think, oh, we'll go in there with some sort of green, but no, we want, we want to start with gold and we'll work our way out. Because trees are not always green, sky is not always blue, water certainly is not always blue. You know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta have those things in mind and they're the sort of things you gotta plan ahead or you'll forget. Okay, and you know what, tell you the truth, I think we can brighten that sun up just a little, maybe later. Maybe we'll get in there and even wipe it off with a shop towel and show you how to do something like that. Take a little bit of our yellow, just the yellow and the purple will kind of cancel themselves out and make it a little bit more neutral. And I'm gonna work that into this, just like, just like so, no big deal. But see, it comes away and it gets that darker purple tone going and it makes a big difference. I like that. Now I've got a folded shop towel and I'm going to just remove some paint here around my sunspot. And you know what, no matter how you slice it, it's just better to take the paint off than it is to glop it on. So glopping it on was fine to begin with, but at the end of the day, I can actually get a brighter sun by removing some of that paint and get a little bit of a softer effect. See that? And just, mm, that really, to me, that adds quite a lot and you don't have to risk mixing mud. So now I'm gonna drop in some some of our golden highlights, starting with the highlights. You don't have to, but you can. You can start in any kind of which order you like. However, I will say this, I'm gonna focus mainly on the center area and just the back. Well, I mean, I'll go over here, but it won't have the golds. Yeah, that's fine. See that just, no, I won't do it all. I'm gonna to switch to my greens because I don't want this painting totally red and gold. You could, you could totally do that. But today I'd like some green in this painting. And I think it's gonna be so pretty to have that green. 
especially contrasting against some of these golden colors. Oh, it's going to be good. So to get the green, you could throw sap green in. Maybe we'll do that. We can also put some umber and some blue. It's a nice green. I wouldn't just grab a sap green off the shelf, you know. I would definitely mix mix this up so that it kind of matches that purple in there to tie everything together. There's so many different little nuances in this. I, I don't want it to just be one flat color. I'm just laying it on and then we'll then we'll maybe fluff it. You know how we like to do that with our grass. <laughs> if you're new around here, you're sitting there thinking this is a mess and this is never going to come out right. But if you've ever painted with me before, you, you know where I'm going. We'll be okay. So now I'm just finishing up layering on or laying on just the final little bit of accent highlight here that we'll use to grab and pull around. That will be very, very good for, for the next step, which is take a clean, dry fan brush and get in here and just begin to fluff it, tap it. You start small at the top. Toward the bottom, you get a little bigger. I'm just gonna tap, wipe. That keeps that brush clean. I don't wanna paint with it. I just wanna, just wanna blend by tapping. And that's critical. Why is it critical? Because if you make the grass down here small and you make the grass up here, you know, like the same size, it's going to look horrible. I used to do that and not understand why. And it would look like you were in a helicopter and you were viewing the scene as like a map top down. It was not good. If you do want it, more landscape, you've got to make giant blades of grass. That's critical giant blades of grass. So, I mean, your grass is going to be like that giant fence post big things in the foreground to create the proper perspective and depth. Otherwise, it just won't look right. Now, let me take just some of our warmer colors, reds, whatever, a little gold, a little blue with our red, maybe. I don't know. Just trying to create a little bit of a greenish kind of golden color. I don't, I don't honestly know. All the colors thrown together. Who cares? <laughs> Let's just begin to, to work in now these trees here. Just the beginning stages of a tree or two. Now, these trees actually, were the, the plan was to make them fairly tall. Let's do that. Get some of my uh, golden colors going. Kind of a little bit muddled. Not perfect, just, just sort of there. Let's see that, just little by little, sort of bringing this together. Nice darkness there. And then here. Good. And perhaps right here, we'll just real quick grab some sort of a, a earth tone and just slide in a little bit of soil. Just as easy as that. Honestly, this brush is probably too big, but it's in my hand, so we're just gonna use it. Get a lot of this soil underpainted now. It'll make a big difference, I think, to have that in. Now I'm glopping, I mean, look at this. I'm using all my paint up. You're thinking, oh, what are you doing there? I'm going to glop it on and I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to remove most of this. But it's just so much faster and whatever I waste is more than made up for it because I just don't put out much paint. I don't waste much at the end. So I'm going to put it on really heavy and I'm going to wipe it off. I've already taken the palette knife and scraped a lot of it off. And now that's done. I'm just taking the shop towel and removing the rest. What is this doing? Well, it's leaving a stain on the canvas. and. This is significantly faster than wearing and cheaper because I'm not wearing out a brush just to complete one painting. Put it on, wipe it off, like right in here, maybe wipe this off as well. Again, just anywhere because I've kind of got an idea of where I'm going. And using that basic idea, it was good to sketch it out as well. We know that there's going to be a little golden bit of grass coming down through and maybe another little spot, you know, in there. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. There it is. Now I'm going to take some white here. And I'm going to take some of our yellow ochre, mix this together. What I'm looking for is just that beautiful grassy color. And I'm just going to place it in. Now, look, this is extremely dry because I wiped this off. Yeah, see, it doesn't even mix now. I tell you, I think that's the best thing I ever learned. Just figuring out how to wipe that canvas off, you know, because sometimes I will I will blot. Sometimes I'll just lay the shop towel up because they're flat and they don't have ridges or texture on them. I can just lay them flat on there and let them absorb the oil and it more or less does the same thing. Basically what's left is what's weaved, you know, stuck in the weave of the canvas. It helps to have a good canvas with good gesso. I actually think the gesso helps more than the canvas does. You want something that, uh, that really sticks well. I know I'm going to get that in the comments. What canvas are you using? I use the Sunbelt canvases and you can go to their website to get them. I don't get a kickback or anything, but that's what I use. I'm going to continue to take some of these browns and whatnot and just place in some shadow where I need it. We're going to 
pull our grass out of this. This is not totally finished. You can do a bit of a bluish purple if you want to in your shadows. It'd be kind of pretty. I think actually it'd be very, very nice. Do some bluish shadow grass. Good. I just want to show you how easy it is to make these little changes. You can see I made a minor change. I wiped away some of the paint there. I'm just adding a little bit of dirt right here in the foreground. I just thought it was too much grass. That's all. I've got a crumpled up shop towel. I'm going to go ahead and just begin to, without destroying this tree, I just want to remove a little bit of the color, the paint from this area. You see, I'm picking up quite a bit there on the shop towel. You know, I've said it before, but just in case there's one person here that's new and hasn't heard, it would be worth saying it again. Don't use a paper towel for this. The best case scenario is that you have somebody else's logo or brand imprinted into your painting. That's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is a bunch of the lint fibers will break off the paper towel and land in your paint. And it's the worst and most impossible thing to get out of your painting. And it looks horrible. Ask me how I know that, right? So use a shop towel. I just want to put on a few little delicate leaves here. And you see, I go outside when I paint these, I go outside the dark with my light instead of being on the inside that allows me to be a lot brighter in value when I do that and go outside and just place on a few of these little leaves there doesn't need much you know because a lot of it was just done with the with the other big brush or, or even with the shop towel and now you just have to do a little bit of this detail not a lot of it even shows against that light background I'm going to spend quite a lot of time here pulling out a lot of these grasses this is critical I've spent um I'm going to spend. I've spent. <laughs> I've spent one second on this. I'm planning on spending a long time because uh, these grasses need to be number one large. Number two, we need to have enough detail in them, so not just grass. But we also need to have like these little seed pod things. See, some of these ones that I did originally with a fan brush, I don't want to cover them all up. I want some of those to be kind of fuzzy or so. Not everything's totally in focus all at the same rate. You know? How do you know? when you've gone too far. Well, it's easy actually. When each brush stroke seems to be removing, like you're, 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 not, you're less happy. Every time you hit it, you're less happy with the outcome of it. Then you've gone too far. Or else you need to stop and do something else, something different and make a change. One of the two things would be for sure happening. Now I'm really getting some longer blades of grass in, almost <laughs> kind of push down hard to get it to, to, to be constant. Those little ones you can, you know, light touch, but, but these big ones you almost have to just really kind of go slower and try to dig that liner brush into the paint so it's not scooting, because that'll actually scoot on top of the paint and break like, like a mountain you would break with a palette knife. You'll get that kind of effect in, the, in a blade of grass, you don't want that effect. You want it to look more smooth. Well, I want it to, maybe I'm just speak for myself here. I want it to look more smooth. When you're doing grass this slowly, it's critical that you do like right what I'm doing here bend some over don't do not get into symmetry that would be so easy to, to to get into symmetry here I mean really easy so be careful it's going to be interesting to see how well this works I've got some a lot of black and brown mixed up a lot of it and this is all very wet thin paint and very globby how well can we get these fence posts to stick I'm going to guess Here's what I'm going to guess after 10 years of painting. First, yep, the first time we slide down, we're going to be good. Well, I actually thought we were going to be better than that. But you see, if I were to stop and brush it back up, instantly we would have had a muddy mess. So I have to wipe off my brush and see about starting again and dragging down. I'm not stressed out because I have in mind to go ahead and just finish with the liner brush. Again, the secret to this is reloading every time. And some of that in there is okay, and, and it's kind of nice. It has a little rim light because it's backlit, so there's a light on both sides. I, I like that. So we're just going to continue here building in this fence. Now, as you can see, I've got a shop towel sitting up here, and it's only been sitting up here a couple of minutes, and I'm going to remove it. You can see, look at all that oil that's been absorbed. Now, what that does is it allows me to do more things down here without becoming uh, a mud slick, without having a mud slick on my hands. I see a line here, although it kind of looks like wire on the fence. You know, you could just leave that, but I'm just going to brush it in. And, and then down here, I want to do more stuff. And I was running out of ability, even with the liner brush, it was getting too thin. So now I can, I can go in and I can paint little flowers. See that? And I can do more things. I can do more details down here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then tell you what, you could probably get in here with just whatever, filbert brush, whatever. 
and bring these fence posts back over and down. See that? Now that I've kind of sucked some of that oil out, I can actually get, there's a little too much paint on that one, but I can actually get these to come down a little further, a little sharper. These flowers are beginning to really add to me something quite special. Uh, the way I'm achieving them is, remember, I've, I've blotted away a lot of the oil paint down here, and I'm glopping on and slightly thinning down this yellowy color. And I'm able to get it to stick pretty well. It's working good. If it doesn't work for you, blot some more, absorb some more of that loose oil underneath with a shop towel. That's the way you'll get it to work for you. But it's like this tall grass here, and then the grass is shorter here, but it's got a bunch of these giant, you know, big wildflowers. That one's big com compared to, let me see, let me see here, uh, a little fan brush there. So you can kind of get an idea for scale. Fairly large flower. I don't like what the flower is doing, you know, it's kind of an afterthought, but, but honestly, it's, it's to me becoming a big part of the painting and it will balance that tree that we have coming in on this side. Now I've got kind of a thinned down golden color here. Of course, everything here is very much a golden color. I don't need much of this. It just won't stand out from the background a whole lot, but let's go ahead and just see about dragging down here. A little bit of highlight on these fence posts. I think it's more of the brush strokes than anything else that kind of indicates, yeah, you can see some light. That's pretty good. A little bit of a, not much, just a little bit of light maybe on the top there. And let's just keep doing that. Yeah, that looks good. Nice, very much silhouette, side, kind of a side light. Not very, not very much of a wrap around on the light, you know what I mean? Leave these fairly silhouetted. I think it'd just be prettier that way. A little texture just to show, hey, it is a log so that you can put a little texture in. You know, you need to look at your paintings from like six feet away. And that will help you kind of make a choice. Decide what you need to do on your painting, not from close up, but from far away. It looks different far away. And that's where you're going to see it on the wall. So that's where you need to make your choices from. I can't tell you how important that is. And if you sit while you paint, it's even more important to get up and, uh, and take a look at it from further back. Now I've got just a little bit of a brown color there and I'm going to just work on some of these leaves up here. I should probably do my golden leaves first, but the brown's already going here, so I might as well just roll with it. And this will really make a big difference when it comes to finalizing this area of the painting. It won't look so bland and whatnot. It'll look a little bit more intentional, complete, than right in through here. You, you try to keep these nice pockets, if you can, of the negative space. And then you just repeat the same old process with the golds and, red, and whatnot, reds, if you want them. As I drop on the highlight here, it's important to go outside of the dark, since I did do the dark first. Just coming outside of the dark is good. Yeah, so that makes a big difference. What happens if you go straight into the dark? Well, you get mud very quickly. I mean, there's not much you can do about it at this point. If you want this really crisp light that I've got here, you've got to just not paint over the dark and then you work it into the dark, but only after you're kind of done with this outside edge. Just using my little comma strokes over and over. The secret here is going slow. The slower you go, now you don't, don't want to get repetitive. Obviously, you don't want to get repetitive, but the slower you go, usually the better the leaves will look. Putting in these last little bit of uh, black leaves and texture is a good way to, to finish up this tree. To tell you the truth, we probably should have done the black last and the, well, black is really umber is what that is, dark umber with a little bit of black in it. Probably should have started with the lightest leaves, but it worked out really good the way it did by placing in some branches, not many. I mean, you can do a lot and then just bury them back in the tree, but I'd rather just not do as many. And that way there, I don't have to bury so many up in the tree. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this one and got something out of it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. <laughs>